Ooh, Wii Party! A generation-defining game, which took the minigame genre and didn't just run with it, it frickin' tap danced away like a graceful little swan. <laughs> there are so many minigames in Wii Party, rumour has it those who start a playthrough never see their wife and kids again. Please, Sandra. Please come back to me. Today, I'm going to be playing through and ranking every single one to find out conclusively which ones are the best and which ones make you want to throw yourself into the volcano on Board Game Island. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. The mini games, that is, not, not the volcano. Oh, please don't put me in the volcano. Oh no, now I'm all hot and melty. Oh. <laughs> Wii Party has a lot of different game modes. It's got board games, it's got bingo, it's got gambling. It's got a game called Balance Boat in which the announcer says balanced, balanced after every single round and it never gets tiring. I'm not going to be playing any of those today as they are game show formats, not mini games, and they're too big and too juicy. Oh. No, all of my attention today was going to be focused down here in the mini game section. And let me tell you, I was so excited to get into all of these games. I know it looks like I'm really short right now, but I promise I'm kneeling down. See, I'm actually a, a tall king. You're probably thinking this guy's playing Wii Party indoors by himself on a weekday. This guy's got no friends, but I've got three friends right here with me, Shinta, Sandra and Martin. These are my day ones. So without further ado, I started my Wii Party journey. The first page to tackle was the four player mini games. There are 41 of these, so strap yourselves in. Buckle up, buckaroos, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Going in chronological order, the first game is Darby Dash. Look at those fine stallions like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. This game is essentially just horse racing, only the entire first three quarters of the game are completely redundant. You see, your horse has an energy bar that goes down each time you whip it. The aim of the game is to conserve enough energy so that your horse can do this sort of final sprint, whilst also giving it enough whoosh during the race so that you can keep up with the pack. The thing is, it's actually impossible in this game for your horse to go off screen. So regardless of how much you whip your horse to high heaven, you're never actually gonna get that far ahead of the rest of the players. Take for example this guy that's whipping his horse as if it's wronged him and his family some way. Not only is he committing animal cruelty, but he's wasted all of his energy way too early on. And by the time it gets to the final sprint, I can just put on the burners, wiggle my hand a little bit, celebrate too early, have a little bit of a panic, but then cruise to an easy victory. So this game is just all about the timing of the final sprint really, but having said that, it's very replayable, it is really fun with a bunch of friends, and to be honest, for the most part, the mini games really go downhill from here. So I'm gonna start out strong and give Darby Dash an S tier. Oh god, this does not bode well for the rest of this video. <laughs> Next up, we have Shifty Gifts. In this game, we seem to have been trapped in some sort of apocalyptic future where presents fall from the sky and we have to balance them in a huge um, teetering tower. Frustratingly, we've chosen to do this activity next to an active cycle path and a dual carriageway. Hence, the presents go all over the place and you have to do some very silly maneuvers to keep them standing. It's an okay game. It's actually pretty difficult as well, especially when the presents start rumbling up and down. I think I'm gonna give it a C tier. Sorry, you might notice that I move quite fast through some of these games, but just trust me, we've got a lot to get through, and if I spend too long on every single game, I might be doing the outro to this video from the insides of a lunatic asylum. Next up, we have Chop Chops, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolute classic. Forget MasterChef, forget Cooking Mama, this game tests how good of a chef you really are by making you wiggle your forearm up and down so aggressively that you'll probably snap a tendon or two. I sound dramatic there, but this game will freaking ruin you. It's a hell of a workout, but in the best possible way. And for that reason, it gets an A tier from me. Now we get to Jumbo Jump, which will destroy your arms in a completely different way. This game is all about timing. You go down this ski run getting faster and faster, you flick up as close to the end as possible, and you soar through the air and see how far you can go. Man, this game is addicting though. The sheer pressure you feel as you're gaining momentum down this ski run is it just sends palpitations to the heart. <laughs> as you can see, I was not very happy with that performance. I did in fact end up as a giant snowball, which is the biggest humiliation in Jumbo Jump. And for that reason, I want to apologize to the fans. 
I know I can do better and I will be better. When you get it right though, it makes it all worth it. The sheer euphoria of soaring through the air as your opponents drop away beneath you is enough to give even the most humble person a power complex. This game is an A tier. You'll notice there my Mii's face is so high up his head that it, his whole entire face actually fits inside of his eye goggles. I'll tell you what isn't an A tier game though, Pop Gun Posse. You just point at the screen and sort of click a button to juggle your can up and down. Every time you juggle your can you'll get a point. The best thing about the game is that you can juggle other people's cans as well to annoy them. That adds a little bit more jeopardy but for me it's a D tier game. Moving on to Hurdle Hover. The aim of the game is to jump over a bunch of barrels and logs to hopefully reach the finish line before any of your opponents. I just want to say Whoever is performing deforestation within this area is very irresponsible. To roll that many huge tree trunks down a public footpath is really not on. In the game you can do a small flick up with the Wii Remote to get over the smaller obstacles, or you can flick up and then wiggle to sort of flap your arms and hopefully fly over these larger series of obstacles. Um, there is one major problem, this game doesn't work. I was wiggling! I'm wiggling! I'm literally wiggling! For that reason, I can't conceivably give this game any higher than a D tier. I think the concept and the aesthetic is what's keeping it from an E or an F, but it's a D for me. Puzzle Pickup. A game in which you have to root around amongst a bunch of random shapes to match them with their corresponding other half. I'm embarrassed to say the computer absolutely destroyed me at this game, and for that reason, I'm giving it an E tier. Lunar Landers. In this game you take the role of an astronaut and what you're supposed to do is weave your way down through this asteroid belt and onto the planet below. The issue is they added way too many asteroids to the point where this game is pretty much impossible. Like there is absolutely no point in trying to dodge through any of this and the game is just luck of the draw really. And what a sad existence that is by the way. You're an astronaut and to get home you just have to let your body just ragdoll around against a bunch of giant cocoa pops hoping you'll reach the ground. Here's a perfect illustration of just how pointless this game is. This one is literally just, look, I'm going to put my controller down, see if we win. Literally, I just, this is the worst, this is the worst game. This might be, this might be the worst one. Like I would have as much chance of winning this game if I just gave the remote to my cat. And she's a genius, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I do wonder if there's anything going on beyond those eyes. The point is this game sucks, it's an F tier. Our first F tier of the day, ladies and gentlemen. And, and boy, am I getting angry. But on a lighter note, the next game, Zombie Tag, is actually pretty fun. You start the game in this spooky graveyard and your goal is to avoid the zombies for as long as possible. If you get caught, you turn into a zombie and it's then your role to go and catch the other contestants, which is good, I think, because you can keep playing even if you lose. It's a B tier, really. I like this game, but not as much as I like the next game, Flag... Fracar, fracas, fracas, fracas? How do you pronounce this? Fracas. 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 It all ended up after all this fracas. 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 No one, no one knows how to pronounce this word. I'm just gonna say fracas, the French pronunciation of the word. Um, a noisy disturbance or quarrel. Okay, that kind of makes sense. This game is simple, but beautiful. It's just a race with the boys on the beach, but my God, is it intense. This is another one of those games that's just infinitely replayable. You know, if Anakin Skywalker was playing this game, he'd probably get all moody and he'd probably say, I don't like sand. But guess what, Anakin? I freaking love sand, especially in this context. This is an S tier. Okay, we're getting through them. Keep the pace up, everyone. Next up, Smile Snap. You just have to take a picture when the most me's are smiling. It's a bit boring. For me, it's sort of like an E tier. Dicey Descent. It sounds dangerous, but this is just another one of those games where it purely comes down to 100% luck. You choose a side to stand on. One side, you're safe. One side, you get electrocuted. Oh great, and we all came first. What a pointless, stupid game. <laughs> It's just 50-50 chance, really. And in my opinion, that puts it in F tier. Ram Jam. Ram Jam. Could they not have used any other name for this game? It does sort of sound like you're engaging in some inappropriate relations with a sheep. 
Having said that, the name is probably the only problem I have with this game. It's essentially a 100 meter sprint through a herd of sheep. I mean, that's genius. This is an A tier game. Feathered Frenzy. Now I know what you're thinking, Jude, focus on the mini games. But it's difficult with this one not to just get swept up in the beautiful surroundings. I mean, just look at that breathtaking U-shaped valley in the background. It's so tranquil and calming, which is in complete contrast to the actual game itself, which is frustrating as hell. Your goal in this game is to catch these feathers which float down from the sky, but the feathers are affected by where you grab, so if you even miss a, a feather by like a millimeter, it just shoots away to the other side of the screen. This game gets a D tier. It would be an E tier, but I'm bumping it up because of just that wonderful, beautiful scenery. Goal getters. Football. Football. That's right, guys. The World Cup may have finished, but the football fever never stops in Wii Party. Not for one single set. Whoa, what is that? That football isn't regulation sized. Who kicked that one in here? Now, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint everyone here because you don't actually use your feet in any part of this game, officially anyway. In fact, all you really have to do is just swipe down with the Wii Remote at the same time as the ball comes across. For experimentation purposes, though, I did bravely go where no man has been before and I put my Wii Remote in my pocket to see what kicking would feel like like. Let's see if this works. Ow! 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 I just kicked the chair! Ow! Ooh. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> it's actually working! Okay. Ow! Ow! That really hurt. So as you can see, it didn't really go that well. This one's a C tier. Saucer snap. You just take a picture of a UFO. That, that's pretty much the whole game. It's an E tier. Quicker chipper. Opinions on my golfing stance. <laughs> Is that too, am I, am I curving my back too much? I didn't realize this, but I think I might be a master at this game. I mean, just watch this first round. I didn't miss a single swing. I was just cracked. It was insane. Am I Tiger Woods long lost child or something? What is going on? I didn't miss a single one. This could be it. This could be what, what I was born to do. <laughs> I did lose the magic a little bit in the second round, but even a Harry Potter gets tired of casting spells. So just give me a little bit of a break. This game is an A tier. And speaking of magic, next up was follow your face. To begin with, follow your face starts out pretty gentle. Each player has a ball with their face on. It goes underneath a cup. Some magic hands descend from God knows where and switch them all around. And at the end, you have to guess where your ball has ended up. Very easy, right? But then it gets faster. And then it gets faster. And by the final round, I swear you have to be a member of the magic circle to get this right. How? I don't have spidey vision. I don't understand. How? How am I supposed to get... Well, that game, I imagine, is used as some form of torture for people who have done war crimes, because that is awful. Okay, I, I may have gone a little bit too far with that comment, guy. I have made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgement. It's just when you do play this many Wii games in quick succession, you do say some things that you aren't proud of, such as this next thing that I'm going to say. I actually kind of like this game, and I'm going to be putting it in B tier. I hope that's okay. All right, let's start reeling through some of these. Maze Days. You have to complete a maze, but every time you step on one of these spinny pads, it changes all of your controls around. This game would be more challenging if you couldn't just turn your Wii Remote 90 degrees and then continue on as normal. D tier. Chopper Hoppers. You control a helicopter and you have to airlift as many Mies as possible. It's an okay game, but it doesn't really do it for me. It doesn't really tick all the right areas. It's a D tier as well. Space Brawl, a game where you fly around in space, bashing into your opponents. I think it's a fun premise. I like how you can pick up objects like asteroids and UFOs and throw them at people, but I just don't really understand how the scoring works in this. Like, I was bashing into people and they were getting points. They were bashing into me and I was getting points. So this only gets a C tier. Stop Watchers, now this is a game. Get this, you have to count. And that's the game. <laughs> no, I sound like I'm mocking it there, but this game is the tensest thing I've ever played. Basically, you get a few seconds to get the rhythm of the stopwatches, and then these ominous screens close down. And from there on out, you're on your own, baby. <laughs> I don't know how to accurately describe to you the satisfaction of getting exactly on five seconds. But just look how, look how happy I am there. I'm literally jumping and raving for joy. I'm sick of counting. I always knew I had it in me. All of you lot in the comments saying, 
Oh, dude, can't count. Oh. Okay, that's, that's actually a good game. I think that might be an S tier, you know. Friendly face off. You just have to do a rubbish jigsaw. E tier. Barrel Daredevil. This game is messed up, man. Somehow, my me has found himself in a situation where a huge heavy barrel on a chain is plummeting towards his head and he has to press a buzzer in front of him as late as possible or the barrel will crack into his skull. Thankfully, I am quite possibly the greatest gamer of the modern age and I managed to pull off this manoeuvre. Ooh! Ooh! I think that might be zero. Ooh! <laughs> and for that reason, this game goes in A tier. Ball Brawl. It sounds like it might have something to do with testicles, but I promise you it doesn't. I promise there are no testicles in this game. Believe me, I checked. <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> no, in this game, your me has been trapped in some sort of hamster ball and you have to roll around the place knocking into your opponents to hopefully bash them into these holes where presumably they just fall into the abyss like Emperor Palpatine out of Star Wars. Warning, do not play against expert competitors on this game mode. They are absolutely brutal. It's probably one of the more elaborate game modes and in a good way, so I'm gonna give it an A tier. Tropical Punch. <laughs> now we're getting into some good games. This is a game in which you're equipped with a giant extendable foam fist and you have to fist your opponents off the platform and into the water. Tropical Punch has it all. Action, setting, passion, betrayal. I'm gonna say it, this is possibly one of the most influential games of the 21st century. And the sad thing is, some people are gonna disagree with me on that. Oh, me, 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 Elden Ring, me, 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 me. Name me one thing that Elden Ring has that Tropical Punch doesn't. Exactly, you can't. What, horses? Yeah, to be fair, Tropical Punch doesn't have horses. But how would a horse even operate a giant extendable foam fist? It's got hooves, don't be stupid. This game is the easiest S tier on the list and I won't hear a bad word against it. Okay, sorry, got a bit caught up on that one. Let's keep going. Strategy Steps. This is the most misleading name ever. It's purely just luck. You choose a number, you hope that no one else chooses your number. And if no one else chooses your number, you go up that many steps. It's, t it's a terrible game. And it's only just avoiding F tier because because, god damn, look at that scenery. Woo hoo, ah. Isn't planet Earth just beautiful? Pearl Plunder. You play as a mermaid and you have to collect pearls. This game is slow and dull. It gets an E tier. Hammerheads. It's whack-a-mole on crack. That's not the official phrase, by the way. I should just stress that Nintendo did not come up with that slogan. Obviously a very classic game, but I just love the designs of these little moles, especially the golden ones. I mean, just look at him. This guy has probably been involved in multiple crypto scams, but how could you stay mad at that little cute little face? It's a B tier for me. Space Race. It sounds exciting. The reality is it's quite underwhelming. However, when I was playing this and recording it, I did actually manage to get the world record in this game. And that's a record that none of you little schmucks will ever be able to take from me. Mostly because it's on my Nintendo Wii at home, but, but still, just let me have this record. Let me have this one thing. I'm running on fumes here. Oh god, how many games have we got to go? Oh, that one's a, that one's a C tier, by the way. Lofty Leap. A game that only the bravest of adventurers are willing to try as you venture deep into the jungle to swing from some vines. This game is one of those ones that will make you look really stupid whilst playing it. The swinging mechanics are quite satisfying when you get them right, but you can find yourself in this situation where you you swing at the wrong time and then it's completely mirrored and you don't know which way you're going and you end up just flying up into the air or you can actually go backwards in this game. Overall though, I think it's a cool setting. I like this game and it gets a B tier. Face Flip. It's just a classic card game. There is a little bit of strategy to it, but I'd be lying if I said I found this one adrenaline pumping. It's a D tier. Spotlight Fight. This is essentially just a reworked version of musical chairs. It's mediocre at best, C tier. Shut Up Up, a game in which you walk around taking pictures of a dog. It's a bit of an open world game, this one, actually. So, you know, if you're a fan of games like Skyrim, maybe you would enjoy Shut Up Up. No, I'm lying. It's not great. It's probably an E tier.
Crybabies, the most obnoxious game you could possibly imagine. The goal is to gently rock the baby in time with the heartbeat to get it to slowly sort of drift off to sleep. But to get the game to work you have to pump your arms so aggressively that the baby's probably experiencing something akin to a magnitude 7 earthquake. The game is really made a whole lot worse by the noises that come out of the controller while you're playing it. It's like nightmarish. Also, may I just point out how all of the babies have adult faces? I mean, what is that? That's not a child, that's a spawn of Satan. I'm thinking F tier for this one, and this game was actually so bad that it broke me. I really had to sleep on things, take a big break, and come back the next day rejuvenated. Hi everyone, I'm back the next day. Yes, I am wearing the same clothes, but please don't judge me. I'm not stinky, I promise. Uh, listen, Wii Party is a very good game, but it turns out you can have too much of a good thing. Far, far too much. And so I just had to take a little break, but we're back again. How many games do we have left? I'm not even sure. The answer was there was only six full player games left. And then 34 in other categories, so let's get going, shall we? Lucky Launch. The clue's in the name, you pick a firework and then it's complete luck as to who wins and loses. I'm not a fan of these games that are basically just pick something and then hope that it does well. This one at least has a bit of spectacle to it with the fireworks, so I'll give it an E. Back Attack. In this one you control a tank which you have to drive around on these train tracks, and the goal is to try and get behind your opponents and shoot their target. This one is actually a lot of fun, it's fast paced, it's very replayable, and it reminds me of my time back in Nam. <laughs> Chin Up Champ. This is the ultimate button mashing game. The whole premise is to just press A and B as fast as possible, but man, I love it. There's something about slamming away on the Wii controller and watching your little me in front of you pop up and down at a rapid speed. Just look at my face, that's blood, sweat and tears are going into this game. This one might be controversial amongst the general public, but I'm gonna go S tier. I'll tell you what isn't S tier though, Walk Off. Walk Off can walk off for all I care. It's basically just the counting game, but without the simplicity that made it so beautiful. The only thing saving this game is that you can sort of creep around, which is kind of funny. Walk Off goes in D tier. Balloon Buggies. This one's okay. It's set in this kind of Roman Colosseum, which is very dramatic, and you drive around in these buggies, popping these novelty-sized giant balloons. It's pretty chaotic, but reasonably fun. I'm gonna give it a B tier. And the very final four-player minigame is really disappointing. It's another game that just relies on complete luck. It's called Risky Railway. Basically, you just choose a side, and hopefully you don't go off the track. It's an E tier for me, and there we are, everyone. Breathe. Ah. Only stop breathing because we have more games to rank. Actually, you can breathe, it's okay. I don't want people who have made it this far in the video to just suffocate at this point. But join me as we venture into the one versus three mini games. There's only five of these, thank goodness, and they are how they sound. One player does one thing, the other three players have to try and stop them doing that one thing. For example, in Splash Bash, one player stands in the foreground holding this giant ball and the others are all lined up along this inflatable platform and it's the one player's job to throw the ball and knock them into the water. Unfortunately, I very quickly realised that none of these games are particularly fun without friends to play with, mostly because the computers aren't really very clever. Oh my god, throw it somewhere else! This game gets a D tier from me. Next we have Lumber Wax, which is a really good name, let's be honest. That's probably the most interesting thing about this game. I mean, I like the sort of aesthetic, you know, the karate school out in the forest with the boys kind of vibes, but the whole game just sort of boils down to three people hopelessly throwing logs while the other player easily just karate chops them in two. This one gets a C tier. Flying Fruits. This game is ridiculous, like it's so bad. <laughs> So the aim is supposed to be for the three players to hold their paddles up in front of these fruits as they fly across the screen. And this is meant to get in the way of the one player counting how many of a certain fruit there are. In reality though, the fruit is comically large, the paddles are comically small, and there is no way that anyone with more than two brain cells is thinking, Whoa, what the hell is that fruit behind that paddle? I just, I just simply can't tell what it is. This game gets an F tier, in a good way, but it still gets an F tier. Then apart from that, in the 3v1s, we have Pose Aerobics, a game where one player sets a pose and the other three have to copy it in rounds that get increasingly faster. This game is fun if you do the poses in real life as well, but otherwise it gets a D tier. And then finally, there's Hide and Peek, which is pretty obvious. Three people hide, 
one person has to seek for them. My favourite thing about this game is one of the hiding places is just so painfully obvious. I mean you can even see there's a player hiding there just from the zoomed out view. Apart from that though it's probably an E tier and we can move on now to the one Whoa. versus one games. Ooh. These are the games that will really break friendships. I mean just imagine the pure fury you would feel when someone beats you at commuter count. No fair! How come you're so good at counting the specific amount of people in each train carriage? Oh, the fun times you'll have playing Commuter Count. Commuter Count gets an E tier, by the way. In Timber Topple, the aim is to swing your Wii Remote at the same time as your player to hopefully chop down the tree before your opponent. For some reason, though, the swiping action is the opposite way to the way that you would actually chop down a tree. Like, how in the world does this action make sense for swinging an axe? It's more like I'm, it's more like I'm doing a backhand in tennis or something. This one gets a D tier. And now we get to Delivery Duel, which is the most competitive game on the whole thing. Picture the scene, you've both been hired for rival pizza companies. One member of the public for some reason has decided to order a pizza from both restaurants at the exact same time and it's up to you to deliver it to him first because he only wants to eat one of them. Imagine Mario Kart but you have to use the worst bike in the game and the only course you can play is Delfino Plaza. We can catch him, we can catch him! Oh no! No! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! That's the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. This game has well and truly deserved an S tier. Shepherd Scramble. You ring a bell to herd as many sheep to your side as possible. The sheep are really cute, so I'll give it a C. Channel Changes. You have to change all of the TVs to a specific channel as fast as possible. This game would be a bit more realistic if you could accidentally press the HDMI button and just mess everything up. It gets an E tier. Springtime. A pogo stick race that looks really fun, doesn't it? Look at them. Boing, boing. Well think again, because this game doesn't work. No matter how hard you pump, you just can't pogo. F tier. Pop-up bandits. It's just another shooting game. It's like the one with the cans, really. D, D tier. Pop-in pilots. This one is kind of like pod racing from Star Wars if planes had just been invented. It's pretty fun. You get to like pop these balloons and bash into each other repeatedly. It gets a B tier. Flag foot race is just the same as flag fracas. Frackers. Roll to the goal is just a vertical maze where you have to roll a ball. That gets a, a C tier. Fruit focus is just a memory game, so that that gets an E. And now all we have is the pair games. So we're basically done it. Oh God, there's so many of them. No, no. Bumper crops. Tilt the fruit to get it to the correct barrels. It's a C tier. Robot factory. Put the correct pieces together as they come along the conveyor belt and get increasingly frustrated at your computer best friend who doesn't understand what colours are. It's an F tier. Paddle pals. Sail down a treacherous river and become frustrated again as your computer best friend doesn't know how to use an oar. This one's a B tier though, I like this one. Torch lit terror. Mum, I want Luigi's mansion. But son, we have Luigi's mansion at home. That describes this one, it's a C tier. Basket bonanza. Throw the ball through the hoop as many times as possible. But don't throw the ball at the same time, or the world might could end. It's, it gets a B for basketball. Tippy Traverse. Run along this tiny walkway, but don't get too far ahead of your friend, or the whole thing might begin to tip and topple. This one is a really good mini game, actually. I think I'll give it an A. Meet and Greet. Pick a door at random and hope that it's not a trap. This one's just luck again. This one gets an F tier. Fishing Buddies. Pull the fishing rod up at the same time to reel in a massive golden swordfish. That's right it's golden swordfish every single time there are no other fish in this part of the ocean this ocean has a very worrying lack of biodiversity this one gets a b tier pop coaster i don't think at disneyland they let you take a loaded gun on any of the roller coasters well, not the one in Paris anyway, but in this game you can, only for the purpose of popping balloons that you see as you go around. This one's pretty good I would say, I would go A tier. Fly Cycle Team. On this one you've got to like flap your arms around in big circles to keep your plane in the air. It's quite difficult actually, you have to sort of judge it so that you hit these hearts that are floating in the air to keep your energy levels up. I like it, I'd give it an A tier. Sheep Crossing, you have to like switch the platforms around so that the sheep can get across the river. I don't know how this situation 
conversation arose. With half of these, I just sort of wonder, how did this come to be? Uh, who runs a farm like this? It's a D tier. Pump cart panic. This one looks very dramatic. It's got some sort of Indiana Jones vibes, but I'm afraid it doesn't work like 90% of the time. So it gets an E. Blastronauts. This is just the terrible astronaut one from earlier. Only instead of going down, you go up. Rodent rundown. You just have to chase this mouse around a maze. Only the mouse has like 300 IQ and he outwits you at every single turn. It's a C tier. Can poppers is the same as the other one with the cans. Spring ringers is terrible. It's just terrible. This game looks so easy and yet it's just impossible. F tier. Bobsled Highway. This one's reasonably fun. There's like a, there's penguins in it. All you have to really do is sort of lean one way and then lean the other. It's a solid C tier game. Jump Rope Jam. It's a skipping timing game. It's got quite a nice aesthetic to it and it's satisfying once you have all of the me's in there. Doing some tricks, doing some flicks. We're all just having so much fun, aren't we? Aren't we just all having so much fun? Isn't Wii Party just so much fun? It gets a B tier. Teamwork Temple. This one is interesting. It's like a bunch of little puzzles which are pretty simple on their own but layered into this kind of big linear adventure through a temple which is kind of cool. I'd probably give this one an A tier. Colour coordination is kind of similar in that way as well. It's got a much more sort of cooperative adventure feel to it. It's like part of a total wipeout course or something and I think that's where these pair games really succeed the most. That one gets a B tier for from me and speaking of games that don't succeed the next one clover hunt it's just a picture search it's, it's boring that's an f tier and then banana blockade is fine you just have to rearrange boxes of bananas in a warehouse that one can have a c tier and i think we're done oh god oh we did it we did it we got we made it through them all i'm so sorry i'm so sorry to put you all through that but look at what we've created together hey wasn't it all just so worth it a big salute to every single one of you that's joined me in this suffering every step of the way because remember guys at the end of the day it's not me party it's not you party it's we party stay safe out there everyone <laughs>